Okay, so comparison time. A microphone that I know very well and have had for a very long time and a new one that I'm still figuring out. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin and in this video we're going to be comparing two condenser microphones, two large diaphragm condenser microphones, the Lewitt LCT 240 Pro compared to the classic Audio Technica AT2020. And I've had this microphone, the AT2020, for let's see, about seven, six, seven years or so. And I had this back when I was doing gameplay stuff on my Ghetto Happy channel. And I used it for a lot of things early on. And it's just one of those microphones that I'm always going to have in my bag and always have in the studio because it's going to be a microphone that you could always go back to in any situation. It's not like the greatest condenser microphone of all time, but it is a solid workhorse and it will get the job done regardless of what you plan on doing. Now... The Lewitt LCT 240 Pro, which is a tough thing to remember, and I'm doing pretty good, patting myself on the back on that one. This is a newer one to my bag. This is a new one to my collection of microphones, and it's really fun to get back into these comparisons, which I did one comparing the Lewitt to the AT2035 because I felt that the first comparison should be a direct comp competitor because they're similar in price, and yeah, sure, the AT2035 has switches, but I feel like the price would be the defining factor of which ones, because they, they actually, people on the internet and people on YouTube compare those two more so than these. But the reason why I am excited for this one specifically is because the AT2020 doesn't have switches, just like the Lewitt. But the Lewitt is more expensive, so let's see which one is a better tone or overall better microphone because there's so many things that go into microphones and having switches or not having switches could be a defining factor if you decide to get it or are these things close enough these one these two specifically that you decide on the AT2020 because it's cheaper and it's so close in everything so the build I'm going to keep simple for all of you. These microphones are very well built. They're very robust and very uh, reliable in the sense that you don't have to worry about them breaking if you like tap it the wrong way or if they are dropped or anything like that. I don't recommend you dropping a microphone, but chances are these ones will be pretty good and hold up pretty well because they are very well built. Now, more specifically, I have accessories with these and I will point this out because it's part of the build the shock mount and the pop filter for the Lewitt I bought separately you can get a package with both of them in it but I decided to buy them separately because I got a good deal on the microphone and just bought them separately cost effective kind of stuff and they're very well made both the accessories and I like the magnetic part there it's a nice touch and the whole like square look and very unique look I really like. Also, I got the white one because I wanted to change things up a bit. With the Audio Technica AT2020, this shock mount here is good for all the 20 series microphones. AT2020, 2035, 2050, and 2040. All of them work on this one. With the Lewitt, I don't know which models work with this one. If you know, let me know down in the comments so I can throw it in my notes and know for future reference. And this pop filter here I've had for a very long time and it's pretty standard. So we got a pretty equal like comparison of like accessories and everything going on. So speaking of the build and how they're constructed, let's get into a tap kind of test. See how they are with rejecting like handling noise. So the microphone stand, very standard microphone stand. Top of it. The multi-mount. The Lewitt shock mount. And the Audio-Technica shock mount. 
Also, the bodies. Lewitt. Audio Technica. So there you go. There's your test. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, the next part of this is going to be my favorite part. Techie talk. Because I really enjoy talking about tech specs and all stuff like that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. So when you really look at these stats, it was actually very easy to edit because I could copy and paste all the stats except for one thing, the sensitivity. And I know there's more to these microphones than just the stats that I showed. And I just show the major ones. I don't show all like the really deep dive stuff, just really the stuff that matters. But the thing that really matters is the sensitivity because this affects everyone. And that is negative 35 on the Lewitt and negative 37 on on the AT2020. It's a two decibel difference. I think it's 37 and a half. So it's even like one and a half. So not crazy of a difference, but it is a difference. Uh, and we'll get into like off axis rejection and things like that, which come, could come into play with the sensitivity as well. And right now they're right around the same level, trying to get it between negative 12 and negative six on my voice as a standard or a steady level. So that's why I always try to do and give you guys uh, a good example of what you have with these at a functional level. And the sensitivity does reflect that a little bit. Let's see. I have the Lewitt at 38 decibels of gain. And the AT2020 is at 38. So like I said, maybe I'm a little bit off with each one. But for the most part, I think it's pretty equal uh, on paper certainly pretty close and with real world experience it's pretty close as well it's not like crazy amounts to really like bug myself about going really deep dive into this but these microphones are pretty identical when it comes to their stats now where the similarities really change is in the frequency response curve and if you've been here before and if you know me i feel that the frequency response curve is the most important thing about a microphone because it shows how the microphone was tuned so yeah frequency response curve Okay, so if you've seen the past video, the LCT240 Pro video solo, I'm redoing the frequency response curve. I apparently got the wrong one, and it was right when I first checked it. It was right when I double-checked it when people started pointing it out, and now apparently it's updated. So as of Ju June, no, July, it's July, July 14th, 2022, I'm looking at the frequency response curve for the LCT240 Pro on the Lewitt website, downloaded the new spec sheet, which I have a previous one that's different. That's apparently the 440, but it's in the 240 Pro's spec sheet. So apparently it's right now. So let's hope that it stays that way. So without any further ado, future Justin here doing the comparison between the AT2020 and the LCT240 Pro frequency response curve. Let's do it. Okay, on the low end, starting with the LCT240 Pro, you have a natural low cutoff. Now, the natural low cutoffs at the low, low end at 20 hertz, it gets to about uh, negative 6 or negative 5.5 decibels and then starts to rise up your low cutoff quote unquote your natural low cutoff is starting around 200 and it goes down now it's a 45 degree slope give or take don't break out the protractors on me but give or take and it's not as like a heavy shelf it's just a dip so natural low cutoff that's what i usually mean when a natural low cutoff it just happens naturally because the microphone doesn't offer a switch so that's how it is for the low end, I feel like it's it's good uh, with those below 50, maybe even below 60 or 80. You're not going to have much detail, but you have some. But for the most part, you're probably not going to use a lot of them. And you could always alter it in post. It's there, but it's not as uh, prominent as other frequencies. Now, with the AT2020, you don't have a low cutoff. You have a dip after it. So in the low end, you have right below, I guess that's zero decibels, but it's right below it. And it kind of has that like little bit of a curve there below 50. 
and then it starts to dip off and then come to a valley around 80 hertz and then rise back up as we move into the low mids and into the mids. Now, comparatively speaking, I feel like you got more presence in the low end with the AT2020, but you also have that dip at 80 hertz, which could be good, could be bad, depending on your voice. If you have a lower tone voice, maybe that might mess with it, but you could also alter it in post. I feel like it's a little more flat in that low end, uh, comparatively speaking to other microphones, but compared to the LCT240 Pro, I think it's more prominent, at least on the chart, not necessarily in tone. We're getting to the tone past Justin. We'll talk about that, I promise. Now, sticking with the AT2020, moving into the low mids and the mids, you got to rise up at around 80 hertz, and it starts to rise to about 200, just like the LCT240 Pro, and starts to level off in your mids. A flat mid section I like for your vocals and spoken word because it's, it doesn't make it too muddy, and it also can be altered a little bit. You don't have to put too much work into it. Moving back to the LCT Pro, it's pretty flat in the mid section from about 200 to about 1200. And a little bump there right before 500, but nothing too crazy, nothing too like uh, life altering or tone altering, I should say. So keep that in mind, and it's nice for spoken word. Now, if you're going to apply it to something else, an acoustic guitar or whatever it is, let me know in the comments. I could always strum a couple of chords for you. I'm not a great guitarist, but I know how to play. So I could strum a couple of chords for you for a acoustic guitar representation of this microphone. If not, you could always check uh, podcasts. He has acoustic guitar and electric guitar representation in his videos. Okay, moving on to the highs and the mid highs or high mids, whatever you want to call them. So at 1200 on the LCT 240 Pro, we have a rise and then starts the plateau. Rise, plateau, about two decibels higher than it was and still three decibels or so lower than zero. So it goes to about, let's say, three and a quarter or so and then rises up to another plateau, dip again at 5K and then has a big boost in its high end. So this big boost is different than what I was showing before because the 440 Pure doesn't have as much of a presence boost in the high end. Peak around 8K. This is good for some people because some people's frequencies, especially people with a more trebly voice and higher end voice, it might amplify a tone that you like. Now, this could be bad as well because maybe those tones are too piercing and maybe you got to bring it back down a little bit. But it's the person to person thing and really depends on who's using it. I would think that a person that is uh, looking for a microphone that wants to emphasize their treble and their high end, maybe this would be an option for you and it has nice high end presence. I know that the AT4040 has some high end presence as well and I really like that microphone, so keep that in mind. And now it dips in a valley right around 12K and then a boost at around 15K. And that boost is a little bit higher than the 440 Pure that I mentioned before, uh, if you watched the video before. Okay, moving on, high end. After 1K, I'll say 1.5K, it's around, it gets to a plateau there, and it's kind of similar there. Then dips at around 2.5, starts to rise up around 3, and slight boost. So you see slight boost in the 6 the eight and a half, nine, and then starts to dip back down with another peak around like 14 or so. Now, very subtle, more flat. Flat is in the sense that it's just closer to zero decibels and not as boosted as you would see with the LCT240 Pro. Personally, I like the flatter sound because I can alter it a little bit more. But if you're a person that's looking for that tone, looking for those specific frequencies boosted naturally, so you don't have to do the work in the back end and you don't have to process the audio anymore, maybe the LCT240 Pro is for you. Now, keep in mind, both of these microphones do not have any switches, no uh, boost, no low cutoffs, no pads, no nothing. So everything that you can do will be in post. Keep that in mind. Now, Back to past Justin where he talks about the tone and everything about the microphone. Everything else should be fine. And uh, if it's not, then <laughs> I've had enough with these videos. The Lewitt microphones have not given me a good uh, taste in my mouth. But I'm trying my best to give you the best information and the most accurate information that I can with what I have. And as of the 14th of July, 2022, it is correct from the website. Back to past me. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do a noise test. 
and I'm going to boost it a little bit in post, let you know in the corner, and then we'll do an off-axis rejection. With these being cardioid polar patterns, we're just going to do distance, 90s, and 180 degrees. All right, so you may have noticed a fan going on in the other room and maybe some laundry. I can't really tell. I kind of have this place pretty treated. It definitely reduces the reflections, but noise outside, it's very difficult to do when you're just working with some noise blankets and things like that. They can only do so much. So throughout this video, I've been talking about two, three inches away from the microphones. Now I'm about like two feet-ish away from the fronts of the microphones and this is what it's going to sound in my mildly treated room like i said sound blankets on all sides except behind me and the ceiling all right 90 degree test on the at 2020 side also known as stage right and this is what it's going to sound like in the studio here mildly treated room okay about two feet maybe even three away from the rears of the microphones and this is going to be the off-axis rejection test for 180 degrees they're both cardioid polar patterns mildly treated room and there you go okay let's go to the booth and uh, give these things a real world live test and then of course i'm going to give my opinion about it in post in the outro um but that's going to be later so i like to do a live and then i like to do an uh post listen and then give my opinion on that in the outro and an overall so if you're new here that's how we do things around here all right so in the booth right now with the lewitt lct 240 pro and the audio technica at 2020 obviously because we are doing that video i'm recording all this stuff all at once so if you noticed i have the same shirt on it's because i'm doing it all at once because this booth right here the new one it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to set up but it's very functional and I really like how it sounds and uh, it's definitely made things easier. I definitely have a lot more room. You notice that I can actually spread my hands out and actually that way is so much. It's basically the studio with padded walls. Like I was telling you before, sometimes I feel like I need a padded room. <laughs> Going crazy, I know. All right, so we're listening to Louie right now as my sister dubbed him. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to understand uh, where this microphone is in the landscape of microphones. It really is one of those microphones that I feel that it has a lot of potential to do uh, good in the content creation world. But I just, on my voice specifically, I just, I'm not sold on it. And... And maybe it's because I got some allergy situation going on right now, but I feel like it emphasizes that nasally sound and nasally tone of my voice. Let's switch to the AT2020 and see if I feel different. Now we're on the AT2020, and I could definitely see where uh, the similarities are because my uh, nasaliness is a little emphasized with this, not as much because I think in that boosted section in the Lewitt, it definitely hits my nasaliness a little bit more, but it's not as boosted on the AT2020 as you've seen in the frequency response curve like we spoke about before. So we got a good lay of the land right now, and now we're going to do a plosive test with a bunch of configurations. All right, Louie, naked Louie. Mm. Pro not provided, but the pop screen that you could get for it, made for it. Now these are emphasized pops, so remember that. SE Electronics. Both of these. The provided windscreen, which alters the tone which you're getting into in a little bit both of them at2020 with the uh amazon uh pop screen i can't remember the name of it the brand or whatever but whatever all right at2020 nakey it's okay 
SC Electronics. And both. Highly recommend this one. Uh, the, the pop screen doesn't really alter the tone that much. You've, you've heard me talk into it pretty thoroughly right now. Now, without it, you notice maybe a little bit. If you notice something, let me know. I really don't notice a lot. And I notice that it just kind of just is a good apparatus to avoid plosives rather than altering the tone, which a lot of those pop filters and windscreens alter the tone. Speaking of that, let's put on the provided one and show you how it does alter it. Okay, so we got the provided windscreen on, and you notice that that high end is kind of dampened a little bit because it's a thick windscreen and it avoids not avoids but it dampens those plosives a little bit more and also affects the tone now certain microphones definitely benefit for having a windscreen like this sometimes people like the uh sure sm7b with the thicker one on the zoom zdm1 in my opinion definitely benefits from having a windscreen like it's provided because it tunes it in a way i prefer personal preference now back to the at2020 this one here this pop screen or windscreen uh definitely alters it as well so let's take it off and see how it is altering it all right so you definitely notice that it opens up a lot of that airiness and that airy upper end there and if i take the s electronics it's not going to alter the tone but it will avoid some plosives always try to get some good microphone technique if you can try to turn it to the side or point it towards the corner of your mouth or combination of all of it little side-by-side -side test with both of these like this maybe let's do this get my my pops out of the way and uh with the s electronics and do a side-by-side -side test and this is what it's going to sound like with the s electronics of everything neutral everything naked and stuff like that very sexy i know so this is what it's going to sound like with just the elect SC Electronics in front of the bare microphones, bare grills, if you will. I know he shows up every once in a while. And yeah, I, I, with the AT2020, it's good. I, I think it's a more neutral tone. With the Lewitt, I feel like it has a nice high end, has some good presence up there. It's definitely more tuned than the AT2020, but depending on your preference, out of the box... I don't know. I think I'm leaning towards the Lewitt on this one. As far as the tone's concerned, there is definitely more flexibility on the AT2020, but I don't know. Uh, I think I'm leaning towards the Lewitt on this one in the booth test. Uh, let's go to the untreated room and see how these things are. All right, so untreated room time. We are in my actual bedroom, a different bedroom, my, my old bedroom. And I wanted to change things up because it's a different size room. It's more of a rectangle. And if you watch the Lewitt video, you notice that I'm in this room now. And uh, not because I have to, but, but I want to just give you some different takes and different variety. And uh, I will be coming in here with uh, other microphones that I've covered in the past to give some variety on uh, different types of rooms. So this room is like a rectangle like I said it's about eight feet wide and about like 15 feet that way so it's longer and maybe more reflection because aside from the bed there's not many soft surfaces and also there's a rug about a quarter of the floor is covered by a rug like an area rug and the rest is wood floor so consider that because this could be relatable to a lot of people okay about like three feet away from the fronts of the microphones and this is what it's gonna sound like in the untreated room uh, this has some reflective surfaces, a lot of stuff in the room, but not a lot of soft stuff in the room. Like I said, there's a carpet or like a rug underneath me. There's a window to the, your left, my right. Um, that's actually stage right, if you really think about it. And I'm on stage left. So this is what it's going to sound like in the untreated room on the distance. All right. So about two, three feet away from the Lewitt 90 degree test in the untreated room AT2020 and the Lewitt CT, LCT240 Pro are both cardioid polar patterns so keep that in mind when you're choosing a microphone. Cardioid picks up in the front, rejects the sides, and rejects the back. It does not uh, completely distinguish the sound but it does help dampen the sound. Lastly, 180 degree test on the AT2020 and the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. I keep 
remembering it because I'm a crazy person. I'm having trouble remembering it sometimes, but this is what it's going to be like in the untreated room, talking to the rear of the microphone about two, three feet away. You're probably hearing mostly the reflection back from the wall over there rather than my voice. All right, let's go down to the studio and see how things are after I listen to them in post. And that is the comparison between the Lewitt LCT 240 Pro and the Audio-Technica AT2020. I listened to every section of this video and really had a tough time with this one. Uh, of course, I ended up on the 2020 again. Maybe it was sentimental, maybe it was the price, but I'm going to go through a couple of things that could help you understand my thought process with this. When it comes to similarities, the off-ax rejection, the noise, the build, and the frequency response were pretty spot on with both of these. The sensitivity was really the only thing that really stood out with the differences between the two. Then, when it comes to the differences, as far as a microphone overall with the tone, the AT2020 has that lower presence, comparatively speaking. It has more of that low end, more apparent in when you listen to it. Maybe it's just me listening to it, but let me know in the comments what you think about that. With the 240 Pro, I noticed that it is more bright, which makes sense if you look at the frequency response curve because it is boosted more in those sections in the presence boosts and the higher end. Now, when switching back and forth in the boots section specifically, I noticed that when I switched back to the 2020, it, set, it definitely like expanded. It felt like it opened it up, like the, the range was opened up. And it, it's kind of weird because they're both 20 to 20. They're not that crazy of a difference with like the emphasis in all the uh, presence boosts and things like that. But I did say the LCT 240 Pro was emphasized more in that high end, which would make you think that it would be more wide and more open but i at least the way i heard it it felt like the at 2020 was more wide open now uh the last thing is plosive rejection and i feel like the 2020 was a little bit better just a little bit not too crazy but if i was to lean one way or another like kind of like a 51 49 situation in percentage i would lean towards the at 2020 so it this definitely got me the price of course it's like 50 dollars cheaper overall the at 2020 still coming out strong in 2022 uh many years after i bought it many years after it's come out the first time i saw the 2020 was probably in an achievement hunter video in like 2012 2013 that was the reason why i bought it because i was wanting to do stuff like that and they were a big influence to my content creation at the time so 2020 was a big influence it still is a big influence because it, it makes me think of where i came from and uh it's definitely something that i would go back to and definitely recommend to anyone who's looking for a solid condenser microphone for a great price that all being said thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed it if you liked the video please hit the like button down below It'd be greatly appreciated helps this video helps this channel the whole youtube algorithm thing it really does help that as well and if you have any comments questions or anything whatsoever down in the comment section please just be nice and just have a conversation with me don't just be rude just have a conversation have a discussion we don't have to agree on everything but we can discuss it and uh, grow a relationship based on our disagreements rather than tearing one apart before it becomes a relationship. I know I'm getting very philosophical and very weird on it. Don't don't worry. It's not too weird. <laughs> and lastly, if you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing. We're well on our way to 2,000 subscribers, which is really cool and much more than I ever expected from this channel. So join the community. Discord is available for the community. There's not much going on there, and there's a little bit of people around there. Uh, same rules apply. Just be nice. That's all I ask. And until next time, I'll see you rebels in the next video.